2024 Audi Q8 Sportback e-tron is part new, all improved. The e-tron becomes the Q8 e-tron and gets some major upgrades that put it back in the game. Audi's first electric vehicle, the e-tron, has been replaced by a new model called the Q8 e-tron. We knew the original name would not last forever as Audi expanded its EV lineup. Like the original e-tron, the new Q8 version comes in two derivatives, a conventional SUV and a coupe-like sportback variant. CarBuzz recently spent a week with the 2024 Audi Q8 Sportback e-tron to find out what improvements have been made to this second-generation model. In transforming the e-tron into the Q8 e-tron, Audi laid out the blueprint for how to evolve an EV to suit an ever-changing market. The Q8 Sportback e-tron features revised styling, a larger battery pack, and a highly requested increase in driving range. Whereas the outgoing e-tron Sportback could only travel 218 miles on a charge, this new one can crack 300 miles with the right trim packages. Are these changes enough to keep the Q8 e-tron relevant in a rapidly growing luxury EV segment? We found out. Exterior Design, Family Resemblance Despite the name change, the Q8 Sportback e-tron is really a facelift of the old e-tron, so the styling hasn't changed too drastically. Up front, there is a new front fascia with a black grille surround that bears greater resemblance to the e-tron GT. That new grille isn't just for show, it improves the drag coefficient by 6%. This is also the first model to get the updated 2D Audi logos and have the model designation posted on the B pillar. As the name implies, the Sportback model features a coupe-like rear end. It looks fantastic, but it does hamper cargo space slightly. The Q8 Sportback e-tron rides on 20-inch wheels as standard, but 21-inch wheels are available from the premium plus trim. Customers can also get 22-inch wheels, but only on the launch edition. If range is your priority, the Q8 Sportback e-tron offers an ultra package on the base premium trim, which drops down to 19-inch wheels with low rolling resistance tires. As we'll discuss later, though, we're not sure it's worth it. Interior, simple luxury. As with the exterior, Audi hasn't changed much inside the cabin. There's still a 10.1-inch central touchscreen powered by Audi's Touch MMI infotainment system with an 8.6-inch lower screen to control climate functions. Though the screens are easy to use without any confusing menus, they are looking a bit small next to other vehicles at this price point. Audi's virtual cockpit gauge cluster screen remains a joy to use with a simple layout that can be navigated from the steering wheel. Our tester was a top-level prestige, meaning it came with Audi's lovely Valcona slash Milano leather seats with heating, ventilation, and massage function. The standard black leather is a bit boring, and we'd prefer either the lighter pearl beige or a copy brown. Buyers who snag a launch edition can get a unique flint gray interior with orange seat piping. We like the look of the volcano ash gray wood inlays on the dash, but some of our passengers commented that it looked cheap. A more conventional dark brown natural sycamore wood is also available and won't cost you extra. Battery and range, stacking stacks up. The outgoing e-tron sportback could only go 225 miles on a single charge. Next to the recent crop of luxury EVs, that wasn't going to cut it. Using cell stacking technology, Audi managed to package a 114 kilowatt hour battery, 106 kilowatt hours usable in the same amount of physical space where the outgoing 95 kilowatt hour battery used to sit. The usable capacity is also improved from 91% to 93%. Range has now shot up to between 296 miles or a full 300 miles with the Ultra package. We are a bit dubious of that claim, though, since we only averaged 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour in our week of testing, which would net about 285 miles. Along with improved range, the Q8 can charge faster than the old e-tron. It now peaks at 170 kilowatts, up from 150 kilowatts, meaning it can go from 10 to 80 percent in 31 minutes. This is still not class leading, but it's more competitive. On an AC charger, the Q8 replenishes at 9.6 kW, good for a full battery in 13 hours. 
There is also a $1,850 AC charging package that adds a second plug capable of 19.2 kilowatts. That would fill up the battery in just 6.5 hours, but few owners will have that level of juice in their residence and it's only available on higher trims. Driving impressions, smooth as ever. Like most Audi vehicles, the Q8 Sportback e-tron puts an emphasis on smoothness. The adaptive air suspension is cushy without feeling sloppy, and the steering hardware was redesigned to deliver more feedback than before. It feels more connected than most gas-powered Audi models, including the conventional Q8. On the highway, the cabin is serene, with very little wind or road noise intruding. As for the powertrain, dual electric motors combine to deliver up to 402 horsepower and 490 lbft of torque. We say up to because that output is only delivered in boost mode, which requires the car to be in dynamic mode with the pedal depressed beyond kick down. In regular driving, it produces 355 horsepower and 414 lbft, this isn't the type of EV that pins you back in your seat, hitting 60 miles per hour in a relatively average 5.3 seconds. Buyers who crave more speed will want to hold out for the Trimotor SQ8 Sportback e-tron. Audi, like Porsche, did not put a full one-pedal driving mode into the CV. There are three Regan modes, but none can bring the car quickly to a stop and hold it there. Audi prefers to let the vehicle coast to a stop, and we must say this car can roll further than any other vehicle we've tested when you lift off the throttle. The Q8 e-tron also lacks a creep function, which is something most other EVs offer. Practicality, limited penalties. Opting for the Sportback version of the Q8 e-tron makes a few sacrifices in the name of styling and range, but they aren't too drastic. You get 27.2 cubic feet behind the back seats and 54.5 cubic feet with the seats folded. Those figures are down only a little compared to the standard Q8 e-tron, which gets 28.5 and 56.4 cubes, respectively. In the back seat, the Sportback sacrifices less than an inch of headroom, but the space still feels plentiful for an occupant under 6 feet. As a reward for these penalties, the Sportback e-tron can travel up to 300 miles on a charge, while the standard Q8 e-tron only goes 285 miles. Pricing and verdict, keeping it relevant. Though it was always a nice luxury car, the e-tron's limited range made it a tough sell in today's market. The Q8 e-tron is a bit more expensive, but it justifies that price increase with a more competitive range and faster charging speeds. Pricing starts at $74,400 for the standard Q8 e-tron, with Sportback models pushing that up to $77,800, excluding the $1,195 destination charge. Our prestige tester rang in at $92,390, putting it in the same territory as EVs like the BMW iX and Mercedes-Benz EQE SUV. The Audi undercuts the BMW by about $10,000, though the iX offers more standard power and around 7 miles more maximum range. It's not nearly as attractive as the Q8 Sportback, however. The Mercedes is about the same price, but has less power and lower range. Audi's improvements have managed to vault the Q8 e-tron from irrelevant to highly competitive. The Q8 Sportback e-tron proves that EVs will continue to improve, evolving with each new generation. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.